Let's do another example similar to that last one and just try to streamline our steps and take some of the clutter out of it. I'm choosing square root property because here's my squared section isolated on the left side. It's a great setup for square root both sides. Okay, not a perfect square on the right side, so I have just brought down square root of 20. Square root and square cancel, 3x minus 4. This radical needs to be simplified. 20 is 2 times 2 times 5. I can simplify to 2 radical 5. 3x minus 4 equals positive or negative 2 radical 5. Now I will finish solving. If I want to keep my rules simple, then the simple rule would be when you get to the end, just split that up. Get the positive, the plus and minus symbol out of there. Get it into two equations. That would be my advice for keeping the steps in my mind straightforward and keeping myself accurate. That's the choice I'll make. Split it up into two equations. Cancel. We have 3x equals, not like terms, 2 radical 5 plus 4. And then divide by 3. x equals 2 radical 5 plus 4 over 3. The choice I'm going to make about how do I divide, it's going to be this from now on. Um, divide, just divide both terms under one denominator of three. That's what I'll choose to do, but I'm going to do one more move where I have to think about the simplify part. And where do I look for canceling? I can't just see it in two spots. If I've got two terms in the numerator and one in the denominator, I need to be able to cancel from all three of these terms. So can I divide evenly out of 2 and 3 and 4? Not. So that's, can't simplify that. There's our first answer. All right, plus 4, plus 4, not like terms. That's where we don't have like terms. That's where we have cancel. Don't let that plus 4 creep in under the radical with the 5 and do something crazy. I know it's just a 5 under that radical. The plus 4 is outside, and it's its own separate term. Divide both sides by 3 to cancel that 3 out. x equals negative 2. Let's do something quickly here. Uh, just to talk about these numbers, because they seem sort of ridiculous about how they look. They're common, the, the form that they're in is actually pretty common. When we are solving these quadratic equations and we have numbers that are, when they're in the equation, they're going to go through a square, and numbers that are nasty with radicals, once they get squared, become rational. So let's just try to learn a little more about these numbers. Let's use a calculator. So I've got to, I'm going to turn this into a decimal approximation. X approximately equals 2 times radical 5 plus 4. That's sum divided by 3. So let's punch that in real quick. 2 times radical 5 equals plus 4 equals divided by 3 equals, interesting, about 2.82. 4, oh, now four digits is enough. We're, we're going to have an issue because we're rounding. So we're going to have to be a little bit flexible about the results that we see. So this number looks a little strange. It is approximately, approximately equal to 2.8240. It's an irrational number. So a number like this is necessary in order to be exact. I can't go here because now I'm not exact anymore. And... In lots of instances where you're doing math, being exact is critical. So keeping numbers like this is critical. And rounding off even to, you know, if my decimal shows me 12 decimal places and I write all 12, you're very, very close to that number, but you're, you're not exact anymore. And that can lead to problems at times. 
So for now, we're only going to turn it into a decimal so we can learn some things about what's going on with this equation. Let's turn this other guy into a decimal just to see how they compare. They look pretty similar. One's got a positive where the other one has a negative, but they have all the same kinds of parts. A 2 radical 5 plus 4 is in the numerator and a divide by 3. Now I can't just say automatically one positive, one negative, so my other one's going to be negative 2.8240 and so on. It's only that section with the radical that has one positive, one negative. There's still a plus 4 and divide by 3, so they're not complete opposites. We're going to get just a different kind of a number. Negative 2 times radical 5 plus 4 and then divide by 3. Cool. X equals negative point. 1, 5, 7, and around that up to a 4. Hmm, so those are the two solutions to this equation. They are solutions that if we plug them in place of that x, and it's going to make our equation true, plugging it in and, and evaluating that expression. So let's try it. We won't, we probably won't get exact. If you are doing this along with me, you can go for as many digits as possible, and you'll get very, very close. You'll see a nice result at the end. For now, we're going to hope to see this, the same good result um, with just four decimal places. Okay, back to work. What we're doing is checking these irrational numbers, but the, the decimal approximation. So I like to, as soon as I've rounded, where I have x equals, now I'm saying, well, x really at this point, it's approximately equal to, I've got the wavy equal sign, approximately equal to 2.8240. And we're plugging in, so three times that 2.8240 gave me 8.472. I still have the minus 4 when I square it, but equals 0. Okay, the takeaway 4 gives me that 4.472. Square that. This is a moment of truth. That's, that's good enough for me for this example. about that? We'll just stop there. The next one would be an, an 8. I'm going to round, keep rounding to 4, although I'm down to 3 there. So I had to round my answer, and that's why they're not exactly equal, but I can see I'm pretty close. 19.998, extremely close to 20. So that's a way that I, I'm seeing a check. I'm going to interpret a check out of that, and, and that looks good. It was a nasty looking number. What was it exactly? X equals 2 radical 5 plus 4 all over 3. That's it exactly. We could plug that in there and do some nice algebra moves to see that it exactly equals 20. I'm tempted to do that. I'm going to hold off on that temptation for right now. And I'm also going to hold off on checking that other result. Negative. Well, I can't do that. We got started with the checking. The least I could do is finish that up. I need some closure. All right, let's check the other decimal approximation, negative 0.1574. Three times that number. Okay, negative 4.4722 should equal 20 once it's squared. All right, so that's really expected because... Once we're looking at these decimals and I see approximately what number squared equals 20, I would have to really see that same thing down here. Just one, of course, one positive, one negative. Once we square that, we get that pretty close to the same results. So another pretty solid check there. We rounded, so it's not exactly equal to 20. But uh, just some extra steps here, some extra moves, extra math to really see that a number that looks nasty, this, these irrational numbers, 2 radical 5 plus 4 over 3, that's just our exact way of representing numbers that are solutions, just like any other ones. We plug them in place of that number, plug them in place of x, makes our equation true. Okay, I cannot resist actually plugging this one in place of x to see that it exactly equals 20. So we're going to do that right now.